Hi, this is Beatles author Mark Lewison, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Marinucci. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today, every time you hear that glorious music that opens our show, you know it's time for another broadcast of Things We Said Today. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, and on this program, we deal with what's going on in the world of the Beatles news-wise. And I'm being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner himself. No one knows more about what's going on news-wise with the Beatles than our own Steve Marinucci. Hello, hello, Ken. Hello, everyone. And I got, you know, I got to say, for everybody that's wondering when we make up our minds on what we're going to talk about, we we usually it usually goes up to the last minute. We never know pretty much what we're going to talk about. You know, I well, mean, sometimes that's because there may be too many things happening that's in the true. news. That's true. So, so that's why we don't do a lot of what we're going to talk about next week. We never we don't do that because things are constantly happening. That's what the fun, that's one of the fun things about this show. And it kind of gives the show a more spontaneous approach. That's right. Sometimes it sounds too spontaneous. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, one of the things that we have wanted to talk about and we finally have the opportunity to do so is the relatively new came out the very end of May, uh Wings Over America Deluxe box set. And because of so many other things happening in the news and plenty of shows that we've done already on Paul, we had to push this aside. But you knew eventually we had to talk about this. Um, This deluxe box set includes a bonus CD of audio material of Wings at Cow Palace, eight tracks in total. Um, There is a DVD, the documentary of Wings Over the World, a TV special that aired uh, in 1979. And also four books four amazing books in many ways to accompany this box set. So why don't we talk, first of all, I wanted to get your opinion, Steve, of what might be considered the most important thing of all, since Wings Over America, first and foremost, is an album of music. And that's Mm -hmm. what most of us think of Wings Over America for. So what did you think of the sound quality of Wings Over America for the remastering? I'm thoroughly impressed with I love the sound quality. In fact, I was listening to it this morning. I have it on my on my uh, iPhone, and um, I, I just I, the 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 sound is fantastic. Uh, the mix is great. I've always loved the the opening tracks, um, you know, with uh, a rock show and and um, you know and and uh, uh, Venus, Venus and Mars and rock show and Jet and Let Me Roll It. Those four songs just sound so great together, and and um, it just sounds it's really wonderful. It really is good. You know, I don't know what more I can say. I mean, is that we've talked about Wings Over America before. But we haven't talked so much about the sound quality, I don't think. No, we haven't talked about the sound quality. But I mean, uh, it, you know, I mean, from seeing, you know, a rock show, the band is fantastic. The set is great. The sound quality is 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 really, really good. I, I think it's really, really good. It sounds uh, a little sharper than in the past. Uh, I know probably some people would say, there isn't that much of a difference between the old CDs and the new. I think there is, uh, you know, I think they do sound a little bit better than they than they used to. Hmm. So, but uh, in any event, I mean, if you know, obviously if you don't have the album, um, the album itself is fantastic. Well, beyond the music itself, which you know is another issue, mm-hmm. we're just talking about the sound quality here. I certainly think that. When I first heard this, I was just kind of blown away at how clean the sound was. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, it has a real fresh sound to it, and yet it still has a vintage sound, if that makes any sense at all. It still sounds like a 70s recording, Mm -hmm. but really cleaned up. And what I've always loved about, well, one of the many things I've loved about the music itself and, and the mix is that certainly on Wings Over America, the bass is really hot right? throughout, uh, you know, all the songs. And I love hearing Paul's bass playing. So um, I'm very impressed with the sound quality. I think and, it's the you know, best I've heard about, so far. One, one thing about reissues in general 
is for me anyway. I, I you know I tend to be really biased toward older music anyway. That's the way I am. You know, even even stuff. I mean, stuff that's newly recorded by the same people versus older recordings. I tend to go for the older recordings, but in in this particular case, especially, you know, the group sounds. And the the recording sounds fantastic, and and I'm glad it was recorded then as opposed to being recorded now. I don't think it would sound as warm, and as there's just a warmer feeling, I guess, from back in those days, and in, in you know in the older stuff, the older recordings than now. I guess I'm just kind of I, I'm not very much of a modern person when it comes to that. But in any event, hmm, I can see what you're saying. What about the books? I mean, you have to talk about them. I, I can't believe <laughs> how much work was put into these books. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm well, blown away by it, actually. Yeah. Some of the, I mean, well, the Humphrey Ocean book was apparently, according to uh, something I saw in the David Frick book, was actually something that had been planned to be put out then. Hmm. And they decided the market, I guess, wasn't really good for it. And um, so it was done in limited, uh, is a limited edition, and it's included for the first time a little more widely here. And and um, so that's interesting from that standpoint. The 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 press book, the big, you know, archival press book that has the CDs in it is really my favorite. I mean, that's there. Are, I mean, you know, there's some great stuff about each one, but that that's the one that. Uh, it's just fantastic because of all the little things that are tucked in the uh, in the pockets and stuff like that. And it looks like a press book. Reminds me of the stuff we used to get way back when, when I was, you know, back in the in my days of newspapers. Yeah. Well, just um, to, to clarify for people who are listening and who don't have the box set, mm-hmm. there's four separate books in the deluxe box set. There's a book called The Ocean View, and that's the one that Steve was just talking about from Humphrey Ocean, who was an artist that uh, Paul and Linda took along on the whole tour, and he drew, he made drawings of what he observed Mm -hmm. of the band throughout the tour, in the hotels, on stage, uh, observances from the fans who who saw the show. They're really wonderful drawings. And um, that's one of the books. You were just talking about, um, you called it the press book? Yeah, Mm mm-hmm. That's the I think biggest, that's the, the tour the itinerary thing. book, I think it's what it's called. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty amazing to itself, because if you're someone that's into memorabilia especially, uh, there's a lot of things in there, like replicas of uh, tickets, to tickets right. to shows of actual wing shows, like in Chicago, for example. In San uh, Francisco. Yeah, and it's great to have those. It I reminds mean, me of those Treasures books, those Treasure series that you can find in bookstores. Uh, sometimes you can find them cheaper now. Um, I think there's there's I know there's one of John Lennon that uh, that you can get, but yeah, it reminds me of those kind of books. I think the difference with that book, with those books and this book, is that it's by someone who has access to really all the good stuff. Whereas mm. those other books, it's kind of hit and miss because you never know, you know, how much did they have access to, or what did they, what were they, what were they able to use? And in this case. You know, Paul, of course, was able to use anything, and there was some great stuff. Uh, I mean, they they were really generous mm-hmm. in they, this book. That they that they were. I, um, I love the tickets. I love the uh, the program reproduction, and uh, so that's that's really uh, a lot of fun. You actually get, um, in addition to replica tickets, um, there's a replica guest pass. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a a ticket that you would have gotten. If you went to the end of the tour, they had a party, if right. you were invited to it. So you actually get a replica of that. You'll find all kinds of things. There's a tour badge uh, personnel list. Other things that I liked in that, in that book mm-hmm. were you got um, the vinyl uh, cover artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all the, all the little promotional uh, pieces of artwork, the, the poster for the TV special. Right. The... Um, you know there is the the photographs at the at the front cover the reproduction of the photographs which are really nice i wish there were more of those there's only 3 of them but those but those are nice you know there's just so many there's so many wonderful things in that in that book you have pictures from inside some of the arenas 
mm-hmm. what it looks like if it was empty. <laughs> I don't know how many people really are curious and, and really want to see that, but that's just something. It makes you feel like you're part of this tour, mm-hmm. like you're a part of the personnel. If you were traveling with Paul and the band, this is what you'd see. And there's a there's the, the press kit is in there, the uh, official biographies that they would have handed out to the press uh, are there. Right. There's just all sorts of neat stuff in there. Um, you know, the set list is in there. I, I don't know if we mentioned that or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the travel schedule. I mean, all sorts of inside stuff that Paul Paul and the and you know would have had access to. The uh, yeah, the photographs of the of the arenas are nice. Uh, one thing that one thing that I noticed uh, mentioning that in the David Frick book, there's an uh, an outside uh, picture of the uh, fans waiting to get into the Cow Palace in San Francisco. And what's very amusing about that, and anybody who lives in the Bay Area will know this, is that the place hasn't changed one bit. <laughs> I kid you not. I was no, there, I, I uh, was there a uh, long time ago, actually. Yeah, and I was there. I was there um, about a year ago, um, taking somebody, taking a friend who's probably listening to the show right now, there for the first time. Uh, somebody from Liverpool, and I mean, I had been there before for a concert in, uh, in the, I believe, in the '80s, but I had not been there since, and I was stunned by the fact that the place hadn't changed. And looking back at that picture in the Frick book of the Cow Palace. The night of the Wings Over America concert, it still hasn't changed. I mean, it's it, it's like going back in time. If you if you visit there, it's like it's amazing, mm. absolutely amazing. That's nice. Mm-hmm. And also in this itinerary book, and again, I don't know how many people are going to be fascinated by this, but you get a list of all the personnel, like the people who did sound, mm-hmm. the people who did light, the cameramen. You know, you're probably going to look at this page, and everything is typewritten as it was in the old days, and it looks like it was just made. And I love the fact that, you know, it looks so authentic. Right. Yeah, that, that, that is very cool, too. One other point about the Cow Palace that I should mention is, for anybody that, that uh, goes to visit the Cow Palace, it's like no more than 10 minutes from Candlestick Park. Hmm. It's very, they are very, very close together. So it's it's kind of it's very funny. One thing that's in the in the uh, press book that I really like that I wish they had done more of is there's um, two newspaper reproductions from the Los Angeles Times with Robert Hilburn, right? And uh, Larry Roeder, uh, R O H T E R. Um, there's two articles. I really wish they had put more of the press coverage of the tour in here. Oh, and there's also a Newsweek article too, as I see as I turn the page. Um, I wish there had been more of that. That would have been fun to yeah. to have. I agree with you. I enjoy um, reading reviews. Yeah, of, of well, what went I, out I just at that time. I like reading reading newspaper articles from back then. Anyway, there's a. I mean, we can kind of comment from from this end now, but really back then is is you know in the middle of it. It has a flavor that you can't you can't get back. Right. And that uh, that would have been really nice to have. Anyway, but there's just so much uh, that the this. Press book just has so many great things, and it has the CDs hidden away in the back. <laughs> um, when you which, first pull out all the books, you're wondering where are the CDs. Right, I was going to say, I was going to mention that too. Yeah, that was a, that was the first thing that came to mind when I opened the package. I went, where the heck are the CDs? The other thing that's in the press book, hidden away in a little card, is coming soon to the Paul McCartney Archive Collection: uh, Venus and Mars and Wings at the Speed of Sound. Right. So and it doesn't say, of course, when, but uh, and it also has the download card for the uh, the high res audio files. So, what did you think of the Linda McCartney book, which is called Look? I love Linda McCartney photographs. I mean, she had a, a technique about her that for taking photos that was just really she never got enough credit for when she was alive, mm-hmm. especially back in the day. Um, people really didn't. Uh, appreciate how good of a photographer she was, but there's some great mood shots in there of Paul. You know, like I think there's one of him looking through a window. There's a couple of great shots of of uh, marquees. She seemed to like to take marquees, and she, there's a couple of great ironic shots of those. And but she's uh, her photography is great. We were talking earlier about the Humphrey Ocean book. Of all the books in the in the set, that's the one. To me, that means the least as far as it, you know, the 
quality and the and everything and the um, need of being in the set. Um, well, I just I, think that they really packed it with as much as they could to represent that time and everything sure. that happened then. And if you read the book, there's another book there, which I commonly call the David Frick book, because I don't right. think it has a name. But they do mention that they had a photographer there, Robert Ellis, who had complete access to the band, and they, he took photos every hour. And they had someone there. They, they had Humphrey Ocean, who was there basically to make drawings right. you know, throughout the entire tour. And they actually explain in the David Frick book why this even happened. And it's all because Paul and Linda were watching a BBC TV documentary on Captain Cook. And they discovered that in his travels in the 18th century, obviously they didn't have a photographer back then, but they would take an artist along to draw whatever they observed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, Frick's, book, Frick's book is uh, is just wonderful as far as that goes. Yeah. it's There's so much information in that book. Um, and I kind of was thinking that it's too bad that that book is not published separately. It's I was so going to say the same thing. It's so good. It really, really is. And that, I think, alone... I hate to say alone because it's because ninety dollars, you know, a hundred dollars or one hundred fifty dollars or whatever you're paying, whatever charging you've paid for this set is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, but that book is worth a lot of the price of the set. It's really, really fantastic. Right. So now, before we talk about David Frick, a few things about the the Linda McCartney book. It's all about life on the road. So there's all these different photos, not just of Paul, but of the other band members and all. And there's actually, in the David Frick book, I don't know if you saw this, but there's a picture of Denny Lane looking at a book of photos that's called Look. No, I didn't. I missed that. Yeah. So evidently, Linda had this idea all along, and maybe to call it Look. But Mm. that's just something that I spotted in the David Frick book. There's some really nice photos there, especially at the very end, which kind of caught me by surprise. There's a photo of Paul and Ringo at the poolside with um, Mary and Stella. Okay, I don't know if you noticed that one. No, I didn't and, see that one. I did see the photos of Paul and Ringo on stage, and Frick's book explains uh, Ringo's little cameo appearance at the at the forum concert uh-huh. and how, you know, they did it very quickly, and he was, on, you know, was, before the crowd barely knew what had happened, he'd, he was there and then he was gone which was kind of a cool thing to do at the end and also shows it also has the uh, pictures of uh of uh Harry Nelson in the audience too mm-hmm. which is which is great and uh Elton John and Cher yeah oh, there there's a pairing for you that's that's an interesting pairing right there <laughs> there's also a picture in there I don't know if you if you spotted in the in the Linda McCartney book of Paul I guess it's at a time when he's doing an interview during this tour but he's wearing a Mersey beat shirt I know you know I did see that and I was going to I was going to send a note to Bill Harry about that and see what he had to say um but yeah that was very interesting I find it ironic you know I know that he he's always been proud of his beatle past but at that time he was trying to avoid relying on you know the beatle times and and the music that's a we good, all know that's a very good point that's a very good point and uh, yet he's yeah, wearing that shirt <laughs> so yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, there's another. I'm I'm looking through the book now. Uh, there's one of uh, him and Ben Fonctori's here uh, being interviewed by Ben Fonctori. Uh, I, I I would assume that was probably Rolling Stone at the time. But yeah, there's some there's some great great shots in here. Uh, Linda was just was just absolutely incredible. And the the pictures of the kids are just just are, are just priceless. You know, uh, seeing Stella that young. Seeing Mary that young, um, those are just priceless shots. Right. Plus the fact that you really kind of sense that this is more a book of like a fan following them in a way. And it has kind of an intimacy in, in that regard. If you were traveling with them on the road and you were taking snapshots with your Polaroid, and some of them are Polaroids, mm-hmm. you would have gotten something like this. I, I saw it actually as more of a kind of a, a view from the road with all sorts of, you know, with the shots, for example, done in the car from out the, out the window and the shots of the rehearsals and the hotels. Right. And it's just a, just kind of a, uh, a, a casual kind of, um, you know, on the road, off, off the road kind of portrait. And, right. uh, she did, she did all of that. So that's what, that's, what's really fantastic. Like I said, I love the, um, the, uh, marquees, the uh, the old drive-in theaters, which of course are you know 
or now history, the mm-hmm. picture of Paul in front of the Paul trucking uh, sign. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's that's really funny. Yeah, there's just some wonderful shots in there. Yeah, and a lot of shots that we've never seen before for the most part. Right. And the David Frick book, I cannot rave about enough because I was going to say the same thing you just said about it should be sold separately. The great thing about this book, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, it really gives you really a short history of Wings. If mm-hmm. you were someone who really didn't know about Wings and how it all started and you wanted a crash course in it, this is the perfect book. I mean, yes, it's about Wings over America, but it does go through the, the whole evolution of Wings from the very beginning and all the different members. And if you ever wanted to know, how did Joe English get to be in Wings? Right. How did Jimmy McCulloch get to be in Wings? It's explained in here. Right. And not only that, but the four horn players are given a lot of attention. Not right. just in saying how they, they came to be on the tour, but there's lots of photos of them. Right. Everything is represented really well here. We were talking about Humph- Humphrey Ocean, photos of him there, uh, Robert Ellis. They talk about Aubrey Powell, who along with the group Hypnosis did cover art for... Um, McCartney's albums with Wings, Band on the Run, Venus and Mars, and Speed of Sound. And they even show they even show some of the covers in development there. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Everything you ever wanted to know about Wings but were afraid to ask is uh-huh. really what, what this is. And there are some wonderful shots, uh, uh, just uh, absolutely fantastic shots uh, that they found for this thing. And uh, some great, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say, I keep saying great, 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 but, I mean, they really are. There's some... Wonderful shots here. I love the photos in there. Yep. Photos of every kind. Mm Mm-hmm. Photos on the road, photos on the plane, photos on stage, close-up shots, combination shots. You know, it's it's really well done, that particular book. It really stands by itself. It really does. It really, really does. There's There's no getting around that. And I really can't say this enough because I just mentioned the horn players, but everybody who ever played a part on this tour is mentioned here. Mm-hmm. Nobody is forgotten, and it's not like you have a whole chapter talking about one person, but you learn enough. At least their names are mentioned. They're acknowledged here. So I really appreciate the packaging between all these four books because it really gives you a feeling of what it was like if you were with them on the road, mm-hmm. all the people who were involved, what the papers looked like if you went from show to show, all the typewritten pages. You know, a lot of care and a lot of love, I think, was poured into this. Two so, more things we need to mention uh, that we have yet to mention is yeah. the wings over wings over the uh, world and the wings over San Francisco audio disc. Cow Palace, um, right? Um, which I really, which which uh, I really thought when I first heard it sounded a lot grittier than Wings Over America, and I've heard other people say that too that it does have a, a grittier feel. It does, and uh, for that, and it's really. I was really wishing that they would have put the rest of it out. Maybe they will someday. I don't know, but uh, it has a more raw sound yeah. to it. And I, I really, I really like that. I think it's fantastic. Well, and I, I was surprised that they even had that. And um, I know I, I spoke to someone at the um, when we saw Rock Show, who said she was getting it just for that. That was the only reason she was going to buy it. Hmm. Um, although. Best Buy kind of jumped that and uh, stuck that in their uh, special package uh, release that they did so that um, they did that special three-disc set with the Wings Over America CD, two CDs, and the Wings Over San Francisco. Right. Um, But still, I mean, I think this is, you know, it's fantastic. It really is uh, that they did that. Wings Wings Over the World is okay next to Rock Show, but Rock Show is much better, I think. Uh, well, it's two different things, really. Oh, yeah. I mean, Rock Show is a pure concert, and in fact, I said this before, but Wings Over the World is, is like a, you know, a light documentary mm-hmm. on the tour. It doesn't hit you over the head with a lot of information. You do have, in between songs, you'll have scenes where Paul's watching a review of the tour on television, or it'll be his birthday that he's celebrating, or he's breaking a pinata, or, you know, things that happened while they were on, on the tour. Right. Um, and it's nice to see all that stuff. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm not going to watch that with the kind of regularity as I would rock show. But um, it's nice to have just to represent that time and just, you know, the fact that it, w- it was on television and we should have it. 
Right. I, I, I think a little differently. I actually think it's nice to see all that uh, tour stuff and there's, uh, you know, all that little stuff um, going on off stage. I, th- I think that's fantastic. And I, I actually think it'll, it holds up a little better than you seem to think it did. My, my problem with Wings Over the World is it's in mono and that, and I can't, and that's, and after the great sound quality of rock show, mm-hmm. you know, to sit there and have to, you know, you really kind of wish that Wings Over the World had been in stereo. But well, I didn't say that Wings Over the World didn't hold up. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that there are different reasons to watch Wings Over the World as opposed to rock show. If sure. you want a pure concert, watch rock show. If you mm-hmm. want a little bit more, if you want to get the feel of what happened on the road and on the tour, mm-hmm. watch this. Well, it, yeah, you know, it's a good representation of that time. Yeah, and there's some, and also there's that ex, there's the extra tour footage um, film that's included that shows um, Harry and Harry and Ringo uh-huh. coming backstage in L.A. and stuff, and so that's that's fun too to have that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, the whole thing is just fantastic. I mean, well, it's hard to. Yeah, the only thing though, and <laughs> I don't mean to sound like a broken record here because if you've listened to our reviews of the other remasters my only criticism that i could ever make about any of them Mm -hmm. is that there's not enough bonus audio and as much as i love the books and believe me i treasure these books the biggest reason why i love all four of the beatles will always be the music first and i can guarantee you that if there was a, a bonus cd with anywhere from 60 to 80 minutes worth of music that I hadn't heard before, that to me would be worth my while, I would go to that far more frequently than I would to these books. And believe me, I love these books. I will go back to them every now and then. They're really the best representation of that time. I really think they poured a lot a, a lot of love <laughs> into this box set. You can't ask for anything more in terms of the books. But as someone who loves Paul first and foremost for his music, I can't understand why they couldn't put at least an hour's worth of music, and for the most part, why do you have to put the same songs that they did on the Wings Over America tour on there? I mean, I got to tell you that I've had friends through the years from like the 80s on up who are big Beatle fans who used to collect every McCartney show if they could, Mm -hmm. and I was never like that. You know, to me, all of Paul's shows were pretty much the same. He gave the same introductions. He did the same set list for the most part. Right. Why bother listening to New York and then listening to St. Louis? It's basically the same show, and... Here we're getting eight songs that were already on the Wings Over America uh, CDs. Are they that much better? N- not necessarily. You know, if I really want a different feel, like we said, it's, it's production-wise, it's much more raw. I don't have as much of a reason to go to that. If I want to hear those songs, I'm probably going to go to the Wings Over America CDs. Oh, I, I disagree with you there, because uh, I think the, the rawness is, is the reason to, to go to those eight songs. And it actually... Like I said, it it kind of hum- makes you hunger for the rest of the set, and it may, and and I'm really I, I, when that when I heard they were only going to put eight songs in here, I was kind of disappointed. I really wish they had decided to go go deeper. But well, that's my major gripe with mm-hmm. all these remasters, and I don't know why this is, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but if you go and look at all the other remasters, for some reason, the bonus audio CD never goes beyond eight tracks. Hmm. I don't know why. Maybe someone who's listening has the answer to this. And unless well, we actually talk to Paul or someone who's involved with the remastering, we just don't know. But when you think about it, what about the rehearsals for mm-hmm. this tour? What about the sound checks? You, more than anybody, <laughs> you report on sound checks more than anyone on the, that I know. Yeah. And in true. recent years, it's fascinating to know what Paul rehearses before his shows and a lot of it's 50s rock and a lot of it's songs that he's not going to put in the show. Right. And if you followed what he's done in recent years, like on Chipping the Live Fantastic or on Paul is Live, he'll sneak songs in there that were part of the sound checks as part of the actual CDs. He didn't separate those songs as a bonus CD of any kind. But you know they had sound checks then. So why couldn't he take anything from those sound checks and put them on the CD? If there are songs that they rehearsed that they didn't do live. You know, I don't yeah. know why you, they couldn't put that on there. You can't convince me that you can't give me an hour's worth of material of stuff, and even if it is songs that they did do live, maybe different arrangements, you know? 
Who well, knows? There's I'll, so I'll, much you could have done. It's just the only thing that falls short on this box set is the bonus audio disc for me. Well, first of all, uh, the bonus audio, for example, on RAM, you had the, the mono RAM, which a lot of people, you know, uh, which I've heard people say is better. And I, I thought it was I thought it was good too. I thought it stood up very well, but and and getting to what you said about the bonus audio here, it would have been it would have been nice to maybe get. Would you? All right, let me put this question to you. Would you have traded any of the books for say one or two full shows? No. Okay. I don't want another show of the same thing. Okay. Because I know people that would have said yes. Because I mean, there are people that would have would have gladly taken new shows that they didn't have, for example, San Francisco, probably, and, and would have would have appreciated paying, you know, a, a, a big price for that, um, as opposed to, you know, having to buy, for example, all the books. Well, first of all, with regards to what you said about RAM, I was referring to the, bo- the bonus audio disc of unreleased songs, for the right. most part. So what I want is the unreleased stuff. Mm-hmm. I want songs that he didn't do live. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I heard that he rehearsed Helen Wheels, for example. I would love to have heard that. So, or maybe something at the start of the tour in Australia. Right. You know, they did Junior's Farm at the beginning of the tour. They didn't do it in America. So, you know, why couldn't you put something like that on there? That yeah, interests I, me I, more. Well, like I said, if maybe if he had, you know, included the, uh, you know, one of the early earlier shows in the uh, in the Wings World Tour, you know, um, that would have that would have been interesting from that standpoint. But I just find it hard to believe that there wasn't enough material that you could have dug up from sound checks from well, that alone. Who knows? Maybe maybe he's got that hidden away and he's saving that for a future reissue. Mm-hmm. You, never you never know. Never know. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. I mean, for the most part, this box set, I, I can't rave about it enough. The packaging is absolutely wonderful. They couldn't have done more in terms of the books. My no, only... The packaging itself is, is really fantastic, and I'm not the type of person that goes crazy over packaging like the, you know, this kind of thing. But, uh, no, the packaging here, the information, it, it puts you right in the middle, takes you right back to the, to the tour, and that's what's, really, that's what's really nice about this. Mm-hmm. So, but We're maybe at, he will. Maybe he will listen to us, because uh, he's playing things we said today on on the out there tour. <laughs> maybe he will listen to us, and and that's well, all because of us. Now, if he starts playing every little thing, <laughs> then I'm going to start thinking, hey, maybe he's listening to to me too. You know? Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, that's his song, so that's true. But um, who, you know, maybe maybe he will pull up some of those older shows at some point. Yeah, we can there, we can hope. There never will be anything more important to me where. Paul's past work is concerned then to hear stuff that has that's unreleased mm-hmm. that we never heard before some surprises thrown in so you know and, and this this pertains to all the other remastered CDs you look at the first McCartney album there's seven tracks there you know I, I just don't know how much there is but you would think that maybe and, and they did say in the David Frick book that every concert was recorded mm-hmm so, and by that, I would, I would assume board quality recordings of every single, you know, show. I still would prefer something that was unusual from the sound checks to that, but I just think they could have done a lot more with that. That's, yeah. that's the only criticism that I have to make. Otherwise, this, this, this deluxe box set comes up all aces for me. Yep. I, so, I, I, can't, I can't agree with you more. Yeah. Okay. So, for things we said today... This is Ken Michael saying thank you so very much for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying I will see you next time.